Uh, it's interesting, we're in the Bradman room, so uh, to use a cricket analogy, we had Trish from Abear who opened up with some very key statistics on Northern Australia and showed the strengths and opportunities we have there. Luke gave an excellent presentation on the importance of Northern Australia, especially the Territory and the opportunities for live and for bruning and finishing of cattle through the system. I suppose to continue on with that analogy as a processor, uh, we're not here to hold our end up till lunch. Um, you know, we're, we're here today to give a pretty clear message that this part of the country is important, it's critical, it has opportunities and really government and industry need to work together to make it happen. To use the old Nike analogy, just do it. Um, for many years we've seen reasons why we can't develop this part of the world. It is the powerhouse for beef and will continue to be the powerhouse. The unfortunate part about this is if we don't move quickly, we will have the potential to lose it. And a very important part of my presentation today is to say, along with Luke's presentation, and you look at that industry structure, I thought he was rolling out the broadband plan for Australia. You know, seriously, it should have been sponsored by Telstra. But it is a complex industry structure. It's not to say it's broken, but industry needs to work with government to make sure that we focus the resources in the right area and get rid of the speed bumps. Again, we've seen many definitions of northern beef and for the purposes of my presentation as a processor, I see it as three specific areas. Western Northern Territory in the Kimberley, Central and Eastern Territory, and for the purposes of the presentation today as a processor, Queensland. As we know, the northern beef industry has uh, significant carrying capacity. It's 52% of the herd, 14.85 million, a 5% increase over the last five years. That's a significant figure. You know, we as a business have 11 processing facilities across Australia. We have four in Queensland, and, and we have assets in southern parts of the country. And as the statistics show, we unfortunately are seeing a decrease in numbers in southern Australia. The beef industry in the Northern Territory does occupy a large percentage of the, the area, including the indigenous land holdings. Reduction system services live breeding and fattening operations, and the weather conditions are quite extreme. And as Luke's images, and they are brilliant images for those who haven't been to the Territory to show what it is like up there. It is challenging, but again, it's a country of opportunity. This is a very important slide for a number of reasons, and it was alluded to earlier. You know, over the years we've had, you know, expectation that we have a meat plant on every corner. And in 1985 we had a number. We had a large number of export meat plants across the country. But if we move forward 25 years, this is what it looks like. Importantly, we've seen a totally different landscape and, contrast, and concentration of processing operations in Queensland, especially in southeast Queensland. In, the, in that period of 25 years, we've seen, on my figures, 29 export plants close in northern Australia. Reasons for that, you know, obviously supply of slaughter weight cattle have been an issue, the seasonal effects up there. We also have seen uh, a significant decline in, in cattle numbers, but we are seeing numbers build. For those who aren't in the meat processing industry, it's not for the faint-hearted, I assure you. Um, I did start with a full head of hair once, <laughs> and I only mean, started in the business two years ago. But no, but seriously, I, I think the point here is that we cannot turn off and turn on these facilities like a tap. They are labour and capital intensive. The poor transport infrastructure and logistics, and importantly, the challenge is to identify and deliver to a full range of markets. We can't just be relying on one key market, i.e. the US grinding market. If we look at the Queensland processing industry, uh, we're supported by the breeding, fattening and finishing, both grass and grain fed. We're seeing, importantly, highly productive operations. The northern beef producer is excellent at what they do. And that comes from a family and also a corporate focus. I saw an important statistic the other day. In the period 2007 to today, 
we've seen 8.5 billion invested in the Queensland beef industry. That's on farm. And it is a strategic core. It has a turnover of 5 billion and generates 36,000 jobs. Importantly, as a processor, it needs to be acknowledged by government that we are a manufacturer. The current debate around manufacturing, we are at the end of the line here. We are the people who break the animal down, who sell the product in a highly competitive market, and we employ a lot of blue collar workers. We are the second largest industry after coal and the largest food manufacturing industry. We own the, uh, the last uh, or the most northern export plant at Townsville. Uh, it's a five day a week operation. Up until 2009, we did have a, a seven day a week operation there, but you know, with challenges up there, both from a supply and, and other factors, we scaled back. Importantly, just to reinforce the labour issues, you know, we have a seasonal allowance in our enterprise agreement up there, which covers less than 32 or 36 weeks. We have 600 employees based in Townsville, and we have a capacity of 200,000 head per year processed. And importantly, it shouldn't be forgotten that, as I said earlier, the northern producer can produce high quality animals. You know, people said we couldn't grade MSA, Meat Standards Australia, quality animals in Northern Australia off Brahman. We are. And that's just underpins the quality of production that can occur in that part of the country. And importantly, as a business, we have had and will continue to have a long-term focus and commitment to Northern Australia. Well, as we've heard, Australia is well placed to service both the live and international processed product to the world. We are seeing growth in per capita incomes. Now, we're a, a Brazilian-owned business, our São Paulo. You, know, you look at what's happening in Brazil today, per capita incomes increasing dramatically. Demand for animal protein is outpacing supply. As Luke showed, one of the important roadblocks that needs to be taken out here is the impediments or the constraints on the physical environment in Northern Australia. The fact is, beef is the major long-term sustainable industry in this region. We have to focus on key issues to support the development in the areas of herd productivity, water and land, retention of labour, infrastructure. You know, an important part of this is trade and market access, and I'll talk more about that later. The federal, state and territory governments have an important role, especially in this harmonisation of policy and legislation, especially over land tenure. We have to be environmentally sustainable, whether we are producers or processors. It's non-negotiable. The biosecurity risk need to be under management, whether it be from foot and mouth or exotic diseases. But one thing I would also like to reinforce today this industry historically has been quite adversarial, whether it be producer versus processor or processor versus producer, and that's been to our own detriment. You know, the much used phrase, if we don't come together, we will die as an industry. Government people here in the room today or ministers we continually talk to often say, we want one position from industry. And as Luke showed in his structure, often the message is confused because various people are going through doors with different positions. We need a common vision to industry, from industry to government. This slide covers the, the Northern Australia Land and Water Task Force of 2009, which was chaired by my good friend Bill Heffernan. Um, Bill's got a passion for Northern Australia. He and Bob Catter, I understand, worked on this development plan. It clearly shows the river systems in the northern part of the, the country. But the, in the report which was delivered in December 2009, um, the task force identified a platform for development. And we go through a range of issues, groundwater, climate, conservation, etc. And as you see there, the Queensland Government has picked up the next stage through the Northern Queensland Irrigated Agricultural Strategy to add value to beef. The question I have, and what industry and government needs to 
deal with is here we have a blueprint. Now we need the commercial delivery of this blueprint and we need to incentivise investment to deliver. And the question I put to both the government and industry is why can't we develop off a platform which has been identified? Historically, as we all know, governments change, both state and federal. Next thing you know, we review, we revisit. We need to build off a consistent platform longitudinally based upon the quality of information, both from government and importantly, how government can better engage with commercial players, both producers and processors.